How's it going everyone? Today, June 10th, 2023 is the official stable release day of Debian 12, codenamed Bookworm, the successor to Debian 11, codenamed Bullseye. Now I'm going to go ahead and show how to install Debian 12, first starting in a Windows environment to create the boot drive, and then we will get into installing it, and then just some general tips and tricks into using it. Anyhow, let's begin. So one thing to mention is that all the links that I will show you, I will have in the description below for you to be able to easily access. One thing I just want to go over is showing off the expected support life of the operating system. Now, as you can see here, so Bullseye, which is the last release, is still good for the long-term support for three more years until June 30th, 2026. And then Bookworm is good until June 10th, 2028. So I just wanted to show that. And this is a very helpful website to see many other different applications that show the versions and when their end of life is for that specific version. Anyhow, as far as the hardware support, it's still a pretty bare bone operating system. I won't go over things here, but I will leave this in the link below for you to go ahead and scan over in case you're questioning if the machine you're using is compatible with it. Now, as far as downloading Debian 12, let me go ahead and show you that process. So on Debian.org's website, on the right here, we'll go ahead and select download. As I discussed in my previous Debian video, you essentially have two options for how you want to go ahead and install it. One is using the net version, and the other is using essentially the full ISO, which has a majority of more packages and whatnot built into it that you don't have to call it to the internet to download. Now I recommend not using the net one. I recommend using the full installer as I'll call it. So as you see here, this is referencing the net install version. What we're going to do is let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page, click on CD slash USB ISO images, and then select download CD slash DVD images using HTTP, and then go ahead and select the platform that you are going to install it on. Today I am using a Intel based machine. So I'm going to go ahead and select AMD 64. Don't let the AMD portion confuse you. It is just stating that it's essentially 64 bit. So we'll go ahead and select this. So it could be an AMD 64 bit processor. It could be an Intel 64 bit processor. So we'll click on this here and it will scroll down to the bottom and then you can go ahead and click on this right here. And then that will start the download process. It is 3.7 gigs, at least in its current state. As newer versions come out, such as 12.1, 12.2, and so on, they'll probably be of different sizes. So this, of course, is the vanilla release here of it. Now, I already have it downloaded, and I've got it on my desktop. Today, we're going to go ahead and use Rufus to go ahead and create the bootable thumb drive. If you haven't seen my previous videos utilizing Rufus, then I'm going to do a quick little tutorial here, in which case anyone who already knows how to use Rufus, you can go ahead and skip this over and you can jump ahead. So Rufus is a great utility to go ahead and make bootable thumb drives in a Windows environment, and it's free. If we go ahead and scroll down here, in this section below here, you'll see it will show different versions here. At least with my machine being Windows 10 64-bit, I just went ahead and downloaded the rufus.exe for Windows X64 here. I already went ahead and downloaded it. It is an executable, so you don't have to install anything. So what I usually do is I usually just stash it on my desktop. And I also went ahead and stashed the Debian 12 ISO on my desktop as well. So I'll go ahead and close out of Edge here. And of course, you will need administrator rights on the machine in order to go ahead and kick this off. So we'll kick it off right now. Prompt us with the UAC. We'll hit yes. And then I am going to click select. And I will select desktop and then the Debian 12 ISO here, we'll hit open. And so we'll leave everything here as is. There may be scenarios where you may have to change things up here if the machine does not want to boot from the thumb drive. So you could go ahead and select GPT or vice versa MBR, depending on your machine. If it's a newer machine, then chances are just leaving things as is should be fine. And then there's really no need to have to change the volume label name, leave everything as is and we'll go ahead and click start. And of course, one thing to mention, and as I hovered over it, is that it did warn that anything that's currently on the thumb drive is going to be nuked. So just make sure that you don't have anything on it before you start this whole process. 
And if you get this pop up here, just go ahead and leave it as the recommended and just click OK. And if you get this pop up as well, then just go ahead and hit yes here. And then it's going to mention again that data is going to be destroyed. So we'll hit OK. And then now we just wait and we'll come back when this process is finished. All right, so building up the thumb drive is now complete. So I'll go ahead and click close. Now, of course, for the next portion is going to be actually getting the machine to boot from the thumb drive. Now, this is going to be very dependent on the make and model of your machine. And the easiest thing to really do is to go ahead and just do a Google search of how to get the machine to boot. In this case, could be anything from rebooting the machine and at the post splash screen, AKA generally when you would see the manufacturer's name, you may have to hit the F2 key. It could be F6, F8, F9, F10, F12, the delete key. If it's a surface, then it's a key combination of the power button along with the up or down volume arrows. So the easiest thing really is, like I said, just go ahead and Google it and you'll be able to find it out that way. And if all else fails and you are on a Windows machine, you could try this method here. Click on start, go to settings, go to update and security, click on recovery, and you can click on under advanced startup, you can click restart now. And then this will give you an option to potentially select a USB HDD, AKA USB hard disk drive, or it could show USB thumb drive, amongst other things. Since I do know what the boot key is for this machine, I'm going to go ahead and use that method. And so I'll go ahead and reboot my machine here. And then since this is a Lenovo machine for my demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and start mashing the F12 key. Not all Lenovo's are like this, but this one is 12 for the boot order. And here we are in the startup device menu. So I'm going to go ahead and down arrow to the USB HDD drive here. And then I'll hit enter. And then here we are. It's already starting to go into the install process. I'm going to go ahead and select graphical install for this. So I'll just hit enter and then we'll give it a moment to go ahead and load up here. So the first screen is going to be your language selection. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as English. So I will hit continue. It's going to ask for your location. I am in the U S so I will click continue keyboard configuration. This looks fine for me, but obviously choose what you need. We'll hit continue. Just be patient as it crunches through these screens here. So the next screen is going to be your host name screen. So this is going to be what you want to name the machine. I'm just going to go ahead and name it Debian 12. Just for this video, we'll hit continue. Certainly feel free to select whatever you like for a name domain name. Since my machine is not on a domain, I'm going to leave this as blank. However, obviously if you are setting your machine up for a domain, this is going to be your spot here. So anyhow, we'll leave it blank for now. Hit continue. And it's going to ask you to set up a root password. So I'll go ahead and type in a password now, and then we'll hit continue. And then it's going to ask you for a new user. So we'll just go ahead and type in just Debian for the user, even though it's slightly confusing, but you can obviously type in what you want here. We'll hit continue. And that's going to ask you how you want the username for the account to look. That looks fine. We'll hit continue. And that's going to ask you to set up a password for that user account. So I will type in the password now and we'll hit continue. And then it's going to ask you for your time zone. I'm going to leave it as Eastern. Hit continue. And then let's actually go ahead and select use entire disk. Hit continue. And then we're going to go ahead and select the hard drive that is actually in the machine here and not the thumb drive, which is listed below. We'll hit continue. And I will leave this all as is here, all files in one partition. However, if you wanted to, you could break things out here. They all have their, their use cases, but generally speaking, this should work for most people. Hit continue. This is basically going to give you one more chance to potentially not nuke the data that is already on the drive. This is just giving you one more option to go ahead and change up anything in case you selected the wrong thing. In this case, everything looks fine. Let's hit continue. And that's going to warn you that we are destroying the data on that drive. So that's fine. We'll hit yes and continue. The next screen is going to mention a network mirror. I recommend selecting yes for this. And it even states here, even though if you're using the DVD image, it contains a large selection of packages. However, some may still be missing with a decent internet connection. I recommend clicking yes here and we'll hit continue. And that's going to ask you 
which country you want to start looking for mirrors in. Since I'm in the US, I'm gonna leave that as is. We'll hit continue. And then it's gonna ask you if you want to select a specific one. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as the default here and I will hit continue. And if I had a proxy, then I would set the information here. Most users won't have this. If you do have a proxy, then generally you would know what this information should be. So we'll hit continue and just be patient as it crunches along here. It's going to be the usage telemetry pop-up here. By default, it's set to no. If you do want to give anonymous data back to them, then you could select yes. I'm just gonna leave this as no and we'll hit continue and let it crunch again. And here you're gonna have a few options that you could choose from, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave these all as default, but it gives you more desktop options. Instead of GNOME, you could select Cinnamon or other various desktop layout options here as well as setting up as a web server and ssh server so i'm just going to leave this all as is here but if you have a use case for these two down below then you could go ahead and select them and then like i said this would be all about just customizing things you can certainly feel free to just google these and figure out what they look like and which option you'd actually want to go with so like i said i'm going to leave it as is so we'll hit continue at this point, the installation is complete and it's gonna go ahead and mention to remove the bootable media from the machine. What I usually do is I'll hit continue. As it reboots, I'll go ahead and pull the thumb drive from it. So we'll hit continue here. Then you're gonna have the grub countdown. We'll let it just run the default here. If all goes well, it should start crunching along. All right, so the good news is that we are at the login screen here. So let's go ahead and just click the user Debian that I went ahead and created. Obviously, whatever user you created should be showing up here. And then we'll go ahead and type in the password. And then let's go ahead and click next for this section here. And it's just gonna run us through a whole bunch of options here. Everything still looks fine, so I'll just hit next. Location services, I'm gonna leave on, but this of course is all up to you. I'm gonna hit next. I'm not gonna go ahead and set up any of my online accounts with this, but you certainly could. So we'll just hit skip. And then it says we're all done. Start using Debian. So we'll just hit that there. So if you've never used Debian before with the default GNOME experience, then I'm gonna run through a few things here. So one thing you can do is you can go ahead and right click on the background here. You can change the background. You can set up display settings, general settings. I'm gonna go into display settings here. I'm gonna go ahead and change up the resolution. Because of me using a Pi KVM, it doesn't properly synchronize the resolution here. So I wanna make this nice and crisp and easier to see. So over here to the resolution, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this down and we're gonna just set to 1080 and we'll apply that. And then you have a countdown to revert or keep the settings. Usually if something is really freaking out, you'd click revert. We're gonna still like keep changes. All right, now things are gonna be a little easier to see here. So you've got a plethora of options here. You've got network configurations that could be toggled on and off, which a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and kill my wired connection here, even though I'm not really sure why I would do that, but it is an option. Bluetooth, of course, setting up Bluetooth devices if you actually had a Bluetooth controller in your machine. Appearance. So this, of course, gives you Appearance options of default, which is a kind of a mix of dark and light colors here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually change this to dark. And then of course you can go ahead and select a different desktop background here if you wanted to. I'm just gonna leave it as default. Notifications, it's pretty self-explanatory here on things of what you do and don't want to notify you on things. Search configurations, multitasking. If you wanna turn on or turn off certain options in here, applications and then this is going to go ahead and show you your applications on the left here which of course is a lot of stuff each one of those is going to potentially have some sort of settings behind it i'm going to go ahead and use the arrow on the top left here just to move us back there's the privacy options which in itself opens up a whole bunch of different things here i'm not going to go over them but it's pretty self-explanatory here into what you can adjust Online accounts, just as we had seen with the pop-up in the beginning, where you can go ahead and synchronize your online accounts to the machine. Sharing, so we file sharing, remote desktop, media sharing, all that good stuff. I'm not gonna go over actually toggling these on. Sound is again pretty self-explanatory. System volume, volume levels, output device, balancer, input device if you had a microphone and configurations for it along with the volume for it, power, 
is going to be your power plan for the machine. I generally leave this as is for the balance plan. That usually works pretty well. Then of course you can go ahead and select when the screen will go ahead and turn off and then when to suspend the machine, AKA put it to sleep and then power button behaviors, displays back to that same exact section that we were in, which mentions the orientation, resolution, refresh rate, scaling, and night light scaling. Generally, I just keep it a hundred percent, but if you're, vision is a little on the poorer side then you could go ahead and adjust it to 200 percent which will make things larger mouse and touchpad again pretty self-explanatory go ahead and adjust what you like in there keyboard it's going to give you some options in here to adjust things printers you can of course add a printer in this case you would need to unlock the setting removable media basically states what it would do if you were to put removable media into the machine colors this would be your color profiles, region and language, which you can change up here in case you need to alter them after you've already changed things during the installation. Accessibility, this is going to give you all sorts of things such as large text, high contrast, zoom stuff, hearing configurations, typing changes, pointing and clicking stuff. Users, this is of course going to give you the user section where you could potentially add another user here. You can also toggle it on to automatically log in, which I don't necessarily recommend for security reasons. You can also go ahead and change up your, your account icon here. And then of course you would have to unlock this section here to go ahead and access those features. Default applications, pretty self-explanatory what each thing is going to do. So of course web-based things for now, at least jump to Firefox. Mail and calendar are gonna go ahead and use evolution. Music and video are gonna use the videos app. Photos will utilize the image viewer. Date and time, again, very self-explanatory. You can go ahead and change up what you like in here. And then the about is going to tell you the general information of your machine. It's also gonna go ahead and give you an option down here for software updates. And you can also change the host name if you need to. And if you click on software updates, for the most part with it being a clean install, Things should be up to date as it would have pulled, especially if you set up your network mirrors as I had. So we'll close out of that. And then we can go ahead and close out of this section here. Now, a few things just to kind of show you here. Now, of course, up at the top is going to be your date and time. And if you had noticed in the section that had mentioned date and time, you can go ahead and change this from the 24 hour or the 12 hour clock here. And then in the top right is going to be your section for power going to be your section for network stuff, volume, nightlight, power options, locking the machine. The screenshot option is here and the gear will get you into the about section in the settings portion. So yeah, you've got the lock button. And then of course you have your power options here, which if you click on it, it will give you more options here. And then you've got your volume, network section, power plan that you can go ahead and toggle between here. Night light We're going to try to suppress the blue spectrum and then the theme mode here. So to get to other things within Debian 12, you go up to activities in the top left here. And then here gives you your options of your application. So of course, Firefox is going to be your browser. Evolution is going to be your email and calendar. LibreOffice Writer is going to be your word processing application. Files is going to be just your files. Software is going to be your software store. You got the help section and then show applications. We'll go ahead and show you all the applications that are currently on the machine. And so you've got a lot of stuff to choose from here, along with some built-in games, utilities, terminal, it's a big one. And then of course, depending on how many things you do have installed, note the dots down on the bottom here. So this is going to state the amount of screens worth of utilities, applications, and all that good stuff. So in this case, we've got two. So I can go ahead and click the right arrow over here, and it's going to go ahead and display more of the stuff that we already have. One section in here that is pretty important for security purposes is going to be your software and updates. Let's go ahead and click on that. Go ahead and move it to the center of the screen here. So it's gonna state what can be downloaded from the internet here. Generally, you can leave these all as is. So you've got other software here, authentication, Trusted software providers, 
developer options. For the most part, you can leave everything as is. And we can go ahead and close out of that. Now, if you are new to Debian or Linux for that matter, and you're trying to figure out how to update your operating system and the applications on it, if we go up to activities, let's go down to the show applications. By the way, there's a few ways to, to do this, but I recommend using terminal just to get your feet wet in it. Open up terminal. And so one thing to mention is that by default, all the user accounts that you are creating on here don't have admin rights per se. So what we want to do is we need to up ourselves to the root account, which is the admin account in order to start the process. So go ahead and type in SU and hit enter. That's going to ask for a password. So the password is going to be the password for your root account. I will type it in now, hit enter. And now you will see here it's got root on it at this point. So with the admin privileges, I still type in sudo and then we will type in apt dash get space update. So it's sudo space apt dash get space update and then hit enter and reach out to those repositories. And then we can do sudo space apt get space upgrade and hit enter. In this case, there are no updates because once again, this is a freshly installed version that already pulled down those updates during the installation process. So that was just the other portion I wanted to show off and we can go ahead and close the terminal. Anyhow, that's all you need to do to get Debian 12 going. Obviously at this point, you can go ahead and customize it to your liking and feel free to dabble with things. Since it is very new, you could potentially run into some bugs here and there, but so far everything seems to be pretty stable with it from my experience and my quick round of testing. Anyhow, if you found this video to be useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I try to release new project videos every one to two weeks, so keep an eye out on things. If you haven't checked out my other videos on my channel, please take a look also. Lots of interesting guides to check over. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.